Warhammer Vermintide 2. So if you took the scene in Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, where they're all in the mines of Moria and they're trying to get out. Ooh, yeah. And you combine that with Left 4 Dead, that's basically what Vermintide is. That's like, that good. is that yeah. whole game. That sounds really cool. It's Fantastic. really cool. Okay. Yeah. That was, yeah. So this game seems like Vermintide 1 came out as one of those things where, like, it didn't make that much of a splash. Turns that, out it, it had sold, a cult like community. Yeah. Well, it, it, I looked it up last night. It sold like 1.6 million on Steam, where it's like, someone's playing this. That's crazy because right. I hadn't even heard of it until the second one was coming right. out. I, I, it's like, I reviewed right. the first one freelance, oh. uh, but it, like, sort of the, the issues I had with it uh, were that it was just super buggy. Uh, you would just have runs end just because someone, you know, was randomly clipped off the map. And just, it was very buggy. And sort of the other thing that I had against it was sort of the, um, it it felt like your gear was uh, capping, like difficulty very much affected what you got. So there wasn't a way, like at some point you just, I either have to play on the impossibly hard difficulty or I'm not going to get anything out of, hmm. you know, continuing to play this game. So but unlike it, Sea of Thieves, there is some carrot uh, at the end of the stick here. Right. Yes. You do level up. Yeah, you do level up and you get better equipment. Uh, you also unlock subclasses. So, unlike Left 4 Dead, like every character is different and has different abilities, and it falls squarely into fantasy trip land. So, obviously, like the dwarf swings a big axe and sounds like a drunk. Okay. Uh, very short. The elf has like you know a bow, and she can snipe people from afar. But within those classes, once you reach like I think it's level seven and then level twelve, you get subclasses. So, let's say that elf, you didn't really want to play bow and arrow archery style, but you wanted to like sneak around and like stab people with daggers from the back and do massive damage. You could do that class. Yeah. So, it's like just taking these tropes and breaking them down to like, okay, what would these characters be special with? Uh, and there's, there's a dwarf with the axe. There's the elf with the bow. There's also a witch hunter that has like a weird fencing sword and a shotgun uh, that's super cool. Hmm. Uh, but basically, every level plays... You know, very much like Left 4 Dead, it is shamelessly Left 4 Dead. Yeah. Like really? you start on one side and you have to get to the other, and sometimes you accomplish an objective at the end, which can be something as simple as like freeing prisoners from a cage, or fighting a boss, or like solving a puzzle. You know, as a group, but it's literally just from A to Z, fighting lots and lots of monsters. And there's an AI director who sends bosses out against you, uh, and it's not as fine. The problem, the main problem I had with it is that the AI director is not as finely tuned as the one that was in Left 4 Dead. So you'll have a lot of instances where like you'll finish killing like the hardest boss it can send against you, which is the Spawn of Chaos, which is this huge bullet sponge that can heal itself. Uh, so, you know, it's not even only like, oh, this takes a long time to like kill. It can also like just snack on one of your party members and like heal itself. So, you know, you usually go through like uh, your entire party will go through like so many supplies and potions. And sometimes this happened twice. I'd turn a corner or we turn a corner and there'd be another one of those fuckers there. Uh, yeah, and there's, yeah. I mean, in the uh, JV and I have played a few rounds and like one of the rounds we played was just we were playing with someone who hadn't played before uh -huh. and we we had to stress at the end of that run that is an atypical run because like we immediately ran into a boss and sort of that boss was like attacking us and then this other sort of like wizard popped up and he was like summoning tornadoes and then this heavily armored guy came in and so like we were juggling all <laughs> these different <laughs> things at that. once so at one point someone got like grabbed and thrown across the map by the big guy and so he got sucked into the tornado and started spinning <laughs> around and then he fell and then the guy with the big axe just like murdered him it was basically Basically, like a loony so we had, and then like awesome. one of the characters was just, one of the like the new guy was just level one so he was like okay don't worry about that like you you did nothing wrong the game just <laughs> it's completely not your fault yeah. dude it's not your fault the game just decided to screw us over so like that was just an immediately botched run yeah like, i would have blamed and it that was all like, on him it was like, Come that was on, like dude, two minutes in too that wasn't like yeah. halfway through the match like we had literally just cleared the starting area yeah and all four bosses had like just fell upon us i like the idea of the ai director just this weird <laughs> where you're just being scared shit list of this one dude <laughs> like we gotta stop him we gotta stop him <laughs> and then like you, you'll have other runs where it just like the opposite of that happens where you yeah. have like one boss one like you know tense encounter and then you just sort of just stroll through the rest of the map i yeah. think that dynamicism is kind of cool yeah, yeah. Like, it, it just it, leads to a lot of like it's, it's just it feels too random versus yeah. like the ai director in left for dead which always felt like we're gonna give you one you know x number of intense encounters and then, and then kind of pace it a little bit better yeah whereas this just feels like all right well like sometimes when you lose there's no sort of like all right what should i do better like do any better years like nope i i the game just decided to screw me over that yeah run. and it's and it's hard not to feel disappointed because like you don't get loot if you lose the match Ooh. like you get experience points like a sm tiny sliver uh as a consolation prize but like you know, you can you can also before the match you can equip these things called good deeds, which are basically modifiers that make or heroic deeds that make uh, the m matches harder 
the levels okay. harder, so they send like more enemies after you, or they like cut your health in half. But also during the levels, you can find secret objects called tomes and uh, grimoires, which will also like, you know, if you carry a tome, you can't carry a health potion at the same time. And if you get those uh, items to the end of the level, you get you know you get to more upgrade. experience. And yeah, yeah, you get you, upgrades to your chest. Yeah, that you get at the end. Yeah, so it, you can you can add modifiers if you want to, and this creates sort of a interesting chaos during matches because you'll have players who are like well i want to get more experience so let's equip this stuff but like one of the items straight up like cuts your health down like the entire like party's, party's health. health oh wow yeah so you know there, there there are interesting dynamics that can happen in matches but it can be frustrating yeah so basically it's it's left for dead with like light rpg stuff thrown in and set in like a fantasy and it's very gory like yeah a lot of blood a lot of rats yeah, a lot like, of a lot of messiness. really like squishy sounds as you like tear into like rats faces with your hands yeah like the dismemberment's super detailed i think my favorite thing because i'm a gore hound uh oh. and a disgusting person in general uh -huh. is uh when the horde is coming at you because it does the same thing again left for dead does with like oh you hear a horn and in the distance like you see this just sea of fur coming at you like if you're there as a group and you're cutting through them, all you see is limbs and like black blood and fur just go flying, and it looks like a blender. That's like, cool. Like you're just like this. What are you putting your blender? blender. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of I have a very sophisticated yeah. diet. <laughs> There's just a lot of crowd crowd control. Like the the dwarf, one of his things is that he can have a sword and shield, which will he has like a thing where he can parry and it'll knock a bunch of people down in front of him. Mm -hmm. So that lets everyone else kind of just start wailing on them. Yeah, it so definitely like, seems like the first person melee. Like at first, I'm yeah. not really a fantasy guy, and starting it out, it's like ah, I guess. I like the Space Marine Warhammer stuff, but the old timey fantasy stuff I'm not that into. But then playing a little bit last night, I was really struck by like just the amount of different moves you can mm -hmm. do. Right. There's it's, different weapons as well. Yeah. yeah, it seems much more interesting just on like a gameplay level than Left 4 Dead. Maybe yeah. like, the setting and the AI yeah. directors. It, it feels a lot more deep. Like the the dwarf again, because that's the class I played. Has like you can change like between a crossbow, which is more like a, more or less a sniper rifle, and then later on I got like dual pistols that don't require ammo, but they have a heat meter that you have to manage. Yeah. So there's a lot of variety in how you want to approach missions, and there's also a lot more. More missions in this than there were in Le either. I think probably Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead yeah, 2 I think combined. There's Thirteen in total. Yeah, oh, that's wow. cool. And so they all act as acts of basically the same story. Like there's like I think three stories, and they're split across like five acts. So you can basically run through a whole story. With and my but, five acts. Yeah, that's but right. let's be clear here. They're they are stories in quotation marks. They they are mostly just like segmented sequences that have like a kind of small. You know, through String, line. Yeah, 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 but that's like, fine. yeah, it's I mean, like it's, it's pretty much like, story. Yeah. it's like, it's just like Left 4 Dead down to its bones. Right. It's but, ridiculous it, how shameless. But that's shameless. a good thing. Yeah, it's a right. great it, thing. It's, it's, a, it's like, I think it's just mindless enough to, to speak with, you know, Left 4, uh, Sea of Thieves, basically. This feels like a much better game to, like, use as a as a informal lobby to just hang out with your friends because yeah. you, can yeah. just, you can just have the story going on in the background, who cares, and just talk about random crap as you, like, you know, beat rats. Right. To, Do you have any suggestions of random crap for people to talk about? What have we talked about? What would you put it's like we made a lot of inappropriate jokes. Yeah, we made a lot of inappropriate jokes. Yeah, because we were I, playing with Surreal's brother and like those two. Oh, that, oh, that old oh rat mouth. Gosh. That's right. I met him at our 300 party. He talk not, talk oh about a crow gosh. man. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> he emerged. <laughs> oh, he emerged. Uh, so 8 out of 10 you gave it? Yeah. Yeah, I liked it a lot. Uh, my, only, my only big issue besides the difficulty balancing stuff is like uh, the game has bots, but they're really bad like worse than left for dead spots like they won't revive you uh or really save you you wow. know i'm sure i'm sure they're intended to but they just don't a lot of the time so yeah. i feel like people who buy the game under the illusion that like oh this game has bots so like left for dead you know i can play through those levels without any fuss yeah that's not going to be the case here like you really should you can play with randos on the internet and have a good time because the game is like designed in such a way that you, you basically have to be nice to each other or you won't like be rewarded. You'll just waste a lot of your time. But like just playing with bots, especially in the later levels. That, yeah. 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 I had fun doing that. Yeah. I uh, mean, yeah. Being yeah. nice to people? I was. Okay. JB, give me nice. Uh, JB's a real right. sweetheart. Well, one of the things, like, uh, I, I will say, like, if you, as you're starting out, don't get discouraged because it is, it starts off pretty oh, brutal. Man. Like your first few runs, or you'll probably lose. But I feel like you, if you think of the difficulties less as like, oh, I want to amp up the the amount of you know how difficult it is, and more about like from levels one to ten, and then ten through twenty. Like though, that's how you should think of the difficulty in, in this game. It's okay. sort of like a leveling guide yeah. versus actual difficulty. Gotcha. Thank you so much for watching this excerpt from the Game Former Show podcast. You can subscribe to the audio version and listen to new episodes airing every Thursday. We cover big games on the horizon, games that we've just reviewed. We have long form developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So check it out every Thursday.